the basics of probability of an event. Through an example, the presentation focuses on defining the terms experiment, outcome, event, and sample space. Success fraction of an event, probability of an event, formula for calculating probability of an event. To start with, what is probability? Probability is the study of randomness and uncertainty. It is based on the idea of an experiment or trial where the outcome cannot be predicted with absolute certainty before it is run. It is the extent to which something is likely to happen. Probability allows us to quantify the chance that a certain event will occur. Probability can be treated as our degree of belief that an event will happen. Let us look at the example of tossing a coin 10 times. We can predict or guess how many heads and details we could get after tossing a coin 10 times. However, a coin was thrown 10 times and results recorded as shown in the table. Here is the table, first column represents the heads, second the tails, and the last one, the number of tosses. Let's use the table to answer the questions. A, what fraction represents the number of heads? You look at the column of heads, there are seven out of 10 tosses, therefore seven over 10. B, what fraction represents the number of tails obtained? You go to the column of tails, we have three out of 10. So the fraction is three over 10. Let S be the number of tosses. Universal set such that the number of elements in set S is equals to 10. Here is what we did to get fraction of heads. It was the frequency of heads over the total number of trials. From the table, the frequency is seven and the total number of trials 10. So it's seven over 10 as you have seen here. Also, let's look at what we did to get fraction of tails. Frequency of tails over total number of trials. And of importance here, not the notation and number of heads over number of um, tosses. That is the numerator. So that's the number of tosses, 10. The same can be said here. So we are going to define the terms using probability using the example that we have seen, right? The term experiment or trial, it is a situation involving chance. And the example is tossing a coin is an experiment because we don't know whether the coin will land head or tail. Sample space, universal set, things that can happen or possible outcomes. Head or tail would be an example of a sample space when we look at the coin. Outcome, possible result. Right on the coin, landing on head or tail is an outcome. Event, which can be referred to a subset of the sample space. That is one or more outcomes. So landing on the head is an event. Also, we define the term success fraction of an event still using the same example. The success fraction of an event is the measure of the chance that the event will okay, as a result of an experiment or a trial. For example, from the result of tossing a coin 10 times, 
the fraction that represents the number of heads or tails obtained is called the success fraction of getting a head or a tail in the long run in a sequence of trials. So the success fraction here is from what you would have seen, then you try to use that to predict what could happen if you could repeat the experiment. The success fraction, therefore, of an event is an ex in an experiment enables us to predict or guess what the outcome would be if the experiment is done again and again. We define the term probability of an event still using the same example that we have seen. The probability of an event is a number or fraction measuring the chance or likelihood of an event happening. For example, from the results of tossing a coin 10 times, if the coin is tossed 10 times again, then the probability of getting a head is its success fraction. That is in the first experiment, we got the success fraction. Now to try to guess what would happen if we carry out the experiment again, we use that success fraction to predict that. And that success fraction gives us the probability of getting the event, in this case, the head. So in simple, we are simply saying, the number of heads we got in the first experiment over the number of tosses, which was seven over 10. This becomes the probability of getting a head if we are to repeat the experiment again. Let us look at the formula for calculating probability of an event. Let P open event and close represent the probability of an event. So this as it is written is read the probability of an event. Therefore, probability of an event is equals to number of ways an event can occur over number of possible outcomes or sample space. We can refine this by trying to make sure that we understand what it really means. We are simply saying favorable number of cases over number of possible cases. This is important to know that as a fraction representing the probability, we need to identify the favorable number of cases over the number of possible cases. For example, from the result of tossing a coin 10 times, if the coin is tossed 10 times again, then the probability of getting a head is seven over 10. And now to this fraction, which was our success fraction, we have introduced the symbol PH, red probability of getting a head is equals to number of heads we got in the experiment over the number of tosses in the experiment, which results to seven over 10. Now, let us look at an example where in we are going to deal with the die, but you need to understand the physical nature of the die. A die has got six sides. Um, the sides are numbered one to six, numbered in the sense that the dots represent numbers. Like in this case, these are four dots. So this side is four, this one is five, this one is six, and the other that you don't see. So we are saying a die was thrown 22 times and results recorded as shown in the table. Use the table to answer the questions. This is the table. Understanding the table also is important in that the die, the numbers one up to six is what is represented in this first column. Then the second column is representing the frequency. Frequency when we go to uh, one on the die, we are saying after throwing 22 times, the one came five times. The same can be said if I choose a three. After throwing 22 times, three came four times, and so on and so forth. So that if we are to add all these frequencies, we should get 22. 
So what we want now is the probability, which shall be written as a fraction and a percentage. So the question is, what is the probability of getting a one, two, three, four, five, and six in the next trials? So to answer this, all what we know is the fraction or the success fraction in the experiment gives us the probability. Therefore, the solution to that then would be in number one, the probability of getting a one. The success fraction is we got five out of 22 throws. So it is five over 22, that's the probability. The same can be said through and through. The success fraction is representing the probability. Therefore, if you add these success fractions, you should get one. And if you add the frequencies, you should get 22 because we threw the die 22 times. Now let's go to the percentages. We are simply changing this fraction into percentage, but you should note that the 22.7 is not an exact number. It is an approximation. So all these percentages are approximations so that if you look at this 18.3 um, written in red, there's a meaning to it. This, to get this, you add the other five and subtract from 100. That is, if you add the other five, you get 81.7. Then subtract it from 100 to get 18.3. This is done to make sure that when we add um, elements of the call, last column, you should get 100. Since the approximation, you cannot calculate this. If you calculate 4 over 22, you get 18.2. But then if you then add together, you won't get 100 because you know that 1 is 100%. So always in mathematics, this is acceptable because these are approximations, right? So this is all what I'm referring to. After adding the five, then you subtract from 100 to get 18.3. This is what is written here. And I've chosen this 4.4 4 over 22, simply because I could not choose say five, over 22 and do this type of approximation there because I have another five over 22. Then that means this value was going to be different from the other one. So I made sure that I chose to do that to a number which is on its own so that it becomes logical. Okay, basically this is what I thought I should share in terms of the basics of probability knowing the terms, then knowing where the probability comes from by virtue of understanding the issue of success fraction, therefore then trying to associate probability with the fractions, that is very important going forward. 